you tell me a little bit? Oh, I, I know about you because your husband has told me quite a bit about you. Okay. And why don't you two just you? Uh, I already know. Who just me? Yeah, I guess. You, huh? <laughs> I'm it. So okay. Uh, middle school science <laughs> teacher. Middle school science. Okay. Yeah. My name is Megan Worcester. I work for New Page in Rockford as a technical engineer. Um, from Winterport originally, and I went to Hamden Academy, and then I went on to UMaine in Orono and got my bachelor's in chemical engineering. While I was there, I did an internship at Sappy Fine Paper in Westbrook, and I did the Pulp and Paper Foundation scholarship thing while I was there. So it's kind of a natural progression to keep keep with the paper industry so I wanted to stay in Maine at least for a couple of years before I moved away just to kind of ease into my adult life a little bit I didn't want it to be too much of a shock but um, so I, I went to New Page and Rumford I'm in the technical department um, like I said I'm, I'm getting my green belt certification in Six Sigma this lovely lady's husband was uh, in my training um, <laughs> So basically the kind of things that I work on are uh, raw material uh, usage reduction, you know, increasing increasing production, reducing waste, improving our process so that we can make more money making the same product and still have our customer happy. So that's me. Um, do you have any questions in particular? You know, honestly, I will say this. When I was in middle school, I hated science. I absolutely hated it. I don't know what it was about it. So I'm not sure I have any tips for you. But um, um, I think the biggest problem with middle school science is just getting it out of the classroom, getting it. Yeah, I agree. Making it real and relevant. When I was in high school and I took chemistry, um, teachers would do really cool demonstrations. Something like flashy and. It just seemed like it was, you know, just for fun. But then they'd go on and explain what it was the real life miniature of kind of thing. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So and some of those things they don't take a whole lot of time. It's like a five minute introduction to whatever it is you're talking about. So questions should I have? I can't think of anything at this point. Um so, you got interested in chemistry in high school, or did you just kind of? Um, yeah, what was your evolution yeah. It, it was it was definitely those demonstrations that got me interested. But um, when I was in high school, I did a merits internship. It's main research internships for teachers and students, and they do uh, they do internships for juniors in high school, and then they also do different stuff with the teachers, which I, I don't know a whole lot about. But um, they basically place juniors in either science and technology related businesses, or uh, there's a lot of professors on UMaine's campus that also do it. But you go and you're basically an intern as like a college student would be, and you do a project, and at the end you come back and you present to all the other merits kids what you did yeah but so I was able to you know design an experiment you know, run it through completion analyze my results and present it and I actually you know solved a problem which is really what sealed the deal for me that's why I decided to go into engineering but the research that I did was not even it wasn't engineering related I was actually working on forestry research but it was just kind of a natural progression because some of the stuff I worked with in my research was, you know, highly chemistry intensive, and I didn't really understand it. So I was like, "Oh, that's I need to learn about that. I don't I don't know how that stuff works. I want to know how that works." So that's kind of what I did. Yeah. I'm starting to get a sore throat from talking so much. I'm sorry. So you've been nonstop talking for how long? Uh, actually, not that long, like a half an hour. But I talked this. I talked my head off this morning too. So. <laughs> But talking tends to be one of my strong points. And that's a good thing. Bruce may have mentioned that. So what is it exactly that you do now? Well, I'm a technology integration teacher. I used to be at Rumford, and then my, we had our kids. So I wanted to stay home and take care of the kids. Yep. And then I wanted to go back to work, but you know what the paper industry is like. Yep. When the machines are down, you don't leave. We still have very young kids. Yep. So I said I'll look into education. Two boys and a girl? Two boys and a girl. Good memory. Yeah. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So um, now I'm the technology teacher in Monmouth. 
but I teach the teachers, not the students. I see. So I help the teachers figure out how to use those laptops to engage their students. Because you said, like you said, that's the flashiness. Well, it's the things that engage them that matter. Something that I mentioned to the, one of the groups that I talked to earlier, kids are like bombarded with media all day long. I ride horses, and a lot of the girls I ride with are in that middle school, freshman, sophomore year, sophomore year high school age range. Their cell phone does not leave their hand, right. even when they're at the barn riding their horse. And some of the adults are the same way. Some of the adults are the same way. I'm like, are you kidding me? College classroom. Put that thing away. Like, you need to take a few minutes away from it to well, like. But it's the, it's the simmer. It's the social aspect. Yeah. I, when I was a kid, middle school, you were on the phone. Though, you know, yeah. That's true. So That's true. this is just you can take your phone with you as the other. It's phone. a lot this of like so much social hyper stimulation though. TV, laptops, Instant gratification. It's flashy. It's high energy all the time. Yeah. And the regular stuff that you yeah, it's like regular stuff that used to be really cool in the classroom probably isn't anymore. Hey, I'll admit I'm a bona fide geek, so <laughs> it, you know. It, <laughs> But, I don't know, it's not always cool to be a geek. I mean, even now that I'm an adult, I have, you know, peers that are like, oh, Megan, you're so geeky. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. And I like it that way. That's what I like. The badge of honor that you wear now. Exactly. <laughs> that's what I enjoy. It's accepted for a while to be geeky than it's ever been. So, yeah. yeah. be glad you're in this Yeah, uh, that's probably true. Generation. I'm double E's. I used to tell people when they called me a geek, you can't spell geek without E's. Yeah, that's really cute. <laughs> no? That's really cute. Proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Humane or Duke? I am not. No, I'm a University of Rochester. Oh, Rochester. Yeah, we, we used to work together at uh, IP. I see. When, that's how we met. We both worked in J. Mm -hmm. And I, I left first and he followed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I left, left for good. But the way I see, think of it is current will always flow for a while the same way. You will always enjoy art. When the kids are gone, I'll go back. Yeah, just like, uh, am I like losing it? Somebody was talking about science and how it doesn't. The principles. The principle always stays right. the same. Right. Right. Gravity and the, works. And yeah. the problem solve. Yeah, gravity works. The problem solving skills are always the same. As long as you know how to solve a problem, it doesn't matter what it is. And that's what's good about engineering. I mean, I'm sure you found that. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm maintaining my licensing so that I don't have to retake testing when I want to go back. So I'm maintaining licensing. But I mean, I I would feel comfortable going into a different field. I think with my engineering degree. This is really similar. Like in education, I mean, the pay isn't as good, but the the hours can't be beat when you have a young family. And it's it's still problem solving. It's just a different form. Different form. So, so you're kind of, kind of like IT kind of a. Um, yes and no. The teachers are we're all given these laptops and they're given the expectation to use them. And some of them have never used laptops before. So my job is to. Well, you should have seen me trying to use the Microsoft Office uh, 2007. I didn't even know how to start the PowerPoint slideshow because I'm not used to that technology. <laughs> I'm used to the old stuff at work. Yeah. So you have teacher in front of. A ton of students who's really nervous about Yeah, and the kids can go. That's right. That's it, yeah. So I'm like the just-in-time cool. resource when they call and say, help, I can't get you know. Yep, cool. That's really cool. Well, and I'm sure this will serve you very well when you go back. Right. And, and I'm dad. I, well, not only that, but you can, when you work for a school system, um, they, they pay for your continuing education. Yeah. So I'm just taking one class at a time to finish master's. Yeah. That's why I got my